simple, basic feminizing makeup to get you started from start to finish. From here to here. How's it going guys, guys and Bells? I'm Alice in Wonder One and your favorite Kiwi trans girl and in today's video I am deciding to do something different because I want to see if I can help you. I get a lot of questions asking me about how I do my makeup. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. All of the types of makeup, what they do, my special tips to get the best results out of them, and I'm going to show you how I apply them. And I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart. I'm not doing this because someone called Samantha6 at 681 messaged me on Discord with proof of my address and photographic proof that they have an atomic weapon. Stay tuned and I'll take you through a step-by-step -step guide to getting started with makeup as a trans woman. Now, I'm a dirty liar and so is my face. Let's take it back a couple steps. Wham, bam, boom. Here I am. This is what I look like without makeup. Hormones have helped a little, but honestly not that much and I wouldn't pass like this. So let's get started. There you are. You're standing in the shop nervously, looking at a wall of makeup, wondering what to buy, what to start with. <laughs> but unbeknownst to you, underneath all of it, your skin is screaming out silently like, MOISTURIZE ME! Be nice to your skin. We're gonna start with moisturizer. Just want to apply it lightly and smoothly massage it into your face. As if it were the pert buttocks of a very attractive woman. Let's move on to the next part. A lot of you are very new. So you're probably wondering, what kind of makeup do I need to begin with? So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go step by step through your essentials, what you should get and where you can find them. To start with, we're looking at concealer, color corrector and foundation. And here's the bit that sucks. You might just have to brave a makeup store. Don't be scared, the people in the store are there to help you and I promise you're not the first. I did it, I've encouraged all my friends to do it, but even if you haven't transitioned yet and you're very nervous about appearing weird or getting weird looks, don't be. Lots of men go into makeup stores to hide blemishes. It's totally normal. They will help you. They don't give a fuck. In fact, no one gives a fuck. They're a retail worker. They just want to go home, ask for help, and see if they can find you foundation and concealer shades that match your skin. First up, color correction. This is an important one for all of you trans babies out there. I love you. Just want to slap you like I slap a baby. Affectionate slaps. A lot of us trans folk deal with a lot of discoloration. Across all trans people you will see this. And some of you are more bothered by it than others. So here's a tip to help with that. Now I'm going to put a guide up here to show you what sort of colors correct what. But the main one you're going to be looking at is, especially if you're pale like me, you're going to want a sort of peach color to go over your facial hair. Now ideally you want to have some sort of color correcting concealer, but I find that eyeshadow works just fine. So I'm going to grab my peach eyeshadow right here and I'm just going to put a tap of it. Next up, I want you to imagine a happy little happy accident. accident. Maybe your latest victim didn't pass out fast enough and they managed to knock over a wine glass and oh now God. there's red wine all over the carpet. We've all been there. You must hide the evidence. This is a similar theory to how concealer works. It hides things. What we're gonna do here is I'm going to apply it all over my upper lip. And I'm gonna put a bit under my eyes as well. Then you just rub it in like you're a 13 year old who just won a football game until it's no longer visible. And look, we're well on the way to having completely hidden away that blue shadow. Foundation is the next building block in your makeup routine. It is the blank canvas, if you will. You put it over everything and it creates a pliable base that makeup will stick to. Just got a little tiny dot. I always recommend anyone starting out with makeup to use a blending sponge. I find this easier. You can, of course, apply Foundation. to your entire face, but me personally, I just put it wherever I've got blue or wherever I'm going to be applying lots of makeup so we're gonna do that today so I'm gonna dab a little bit here and a little bit here and then I'm gonna put a little bit on each of my eyelids because of course we're going to be doing eyeshadow later and then you just carefully dab it in so you can see now I've got all of my color corrector I've got my concealer and I've got my foundation on and all of the skin down here is now all the same color. So for those of you that are really struggling with facial hair shadow, I hope that helps you out. Okay, now I've, I've made a joke about the name of my blush in every single makeup video I've ever done. But today I'm going to do something different. Today my blush has a rectal dis- 
Blush. For me, a nice rosy color does perfectly, but I'm gonna put a color chart up here. Our aim today is to have passing feminizing makeup, not necessarily to look like a diva or a ego. I'm gonna put a fair bit of blush on. You can see that's quite pink now. Now, eyes. Remember, your eyes are balls. And as trans women, we don't really like balls. So you need to hide them. Think of it like tucking, except your nose is probably smaller than your pink. Mine's not. My nose is enormous and I have a vagina now. All jokes aside, when it comes down to feminizing makeup, eyes are the key. Once you've got facial hair all evened out, your eyes are gonna do all of the heavy lifting. So. Woo! The first element to good eye makeup is eyeshadow. Now, there's a lot of options. As you can see, there's like a million different fucking colors. And then there are a million different palettes with a billion other colors. The purpose of eyeshadow is to just make your eyes look a little bit more sultry, to make them look a little bit darker, a little bit more alluring. I've seen a lot of trans people fall into the trap of going, Ooh, darkness, darkness become me. I listen to Evanescence every day. Don't fall for that. Believe me, I've been there. I did it too. Black eyeshadow is not the go. Here's the main thing. Most of us being AMAB, unfortunately with our bone structure are going to have a protruding brow bone. Now, what that brow bone does, of course, is cast shadow. If I don't have my light on here, you can actually see that my brows are casting a shadow on the rest of my eye, already making them darker. If you make them darker still, you're just gonna look like a skeleton. Here are some pictures of me way back in the day before I figured this out. When I was a baby trans. Don't do what I did. Go for a sort of medium color. And now when you apply eyeshadow, I always use these funky little applicator pads. I think they're brilliant. And just to show you how to use eyeshadow, just grab it, lightly drag it across. And from there, it's fairly simple. Some people also have beautiful hooded eyes, but they might not let you apply as much eyeshadow. For eyes like that, I would really recommend just going straight for eyeliner. Another thing I always find helps with eyeshadow, doing a little bit of inner corner highlight. This just makes your eyes pop a little. You don't have to do that, but I find it's a nice touch. Next up, eyeliner. A lot of people are terrified of eyeliner and it's probably justified. Me, it took me a while, but I'm pretty good at it now. And that leads me on to my next point, And that is that practice makes Perfect. Makeup is not something you're going to be innately good at. It is a hand-eye coordination skill. It is practical. It uses your hand, your eye, and your brain. You need all three of them to work together and that takes practice. The only way you're gonna get good at makeup is to do it lots. When I started transitioning, I was doing my makeup every day, seven days a week, and I got really good really quickly. You can do it too. Just be brave, don't lose faith when it doesn't go too well, and just keep on trying. Now my first tip with eyeliner, and this is something, this is something that bugs me a little bit, because I still see people doing it, and I say it every time I'm talking about makeup. Trans women, my, my beautiful fellow trans women, don't do this. Don't do it like this. Don't do it like, do it like this. Put your palm on your jaw. What that does is it gives your hand a little bit of support, a little bit of stability, and all of a sudden your hand's not shaking and you can do much finer lines. This is an absolute life hack. I started doing it two weeks in from my transition and immediately people were suddenly like, oh my God, how did you get your eyeliner so good? I'm like, it's not that hard. Let's do a comparison, okay? Without. and immediately fucked it up. With. Eyeliner exists solely to accentuate the shape of your eye. It is so easy to look at these beautiful girls with these beautiful long wings and be like, oh my God, I'm gonna do that. But then sometimes you try it and it doesn't look that great. You need to tailor your eyeliner to the shape of your eye. I started off doing these big, huge lines because I thought they were sexy and really cool. And while they were fun and while they were a challenge, they actually didn't suit my face the best. I kept on trying different things until I found a shape that works. And that leads on to my next tip about eyeliner. Nay, my next tip about makeup in general is that trial and error is king. Queen.
My main recommendation to you is to just try things until you find something that really works on your face. Next up, the last part of our eye makeup, mascara. I always recommend using a lash curler. Now be careful with lash curlers because if you're in the middle of curling your lashes and someone gives you a jump scare, you're going to rip all of your eyelashes out. And that sounds scary, but it hasn't happened to me yet. However, it has happened to the six people I've scared. You just want to get them all under that squeeze for a few seconds and then let go. Now mascara is really quite easy. A lot of the time you can get like a liquid mascara that comes in these little things. You can just pull them out and they're covered in little black globules of mascara. That works fine. The trick with mascara is that it makes your eyelashes a lot longer. And you can do the bottom as well. You don't always have to do the bottom. Bottom. You're a bottom. Don't argue. I've seen the way you look at me in high heels. And there we go, that's our eyes done. And I'm gonna add one last thing. You don't have to do this, but I just like it. I like putting fake freckles on because that's just kind of my digs. I use a uh, waterproof brow liner and I just dot it on. And now the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna play around with our lips a little bit. Not by sucking dick, by kissing the homies. I suppose there are really two different types of lip makeup that you need to keep in mind. You've got lip gloss and you've got lipstick. My preference is always gonna to be towards lip gloss. In my opinion, it just, it's easier to use, which is perfect for all of you baby trans out there. And it makes you look super kissable. Nice glossy lips. It looks just like you're ready to start a makeout sesh with the other four trans girls in your neighborhood. I've got some that's just a nude color because obviously I like being nude. On the other side of that spectrum, you've got lipstick. You've got the lipsticks that twist. Now I'm gonna be a little bit judgmental here, but I do see a lot of trans women, new to makeup, trying to make it work with that lipstick and they just end up really like going over their lip and it doesn't look good. That's why my recommendation is always gonna be for lip gloss. Um, if I am using a lipstick, I use something like this. It's, it's lipstick, but it's in the similar format to how you apply lip gloss. And I say lip gloss, but this was of course just cum. And now I'm gonna wrap it all up and apply the finishing touches. Earrings. Hair. And last but not least, oh no, my glasses. I can't see without my glasses. My glasses. Simple, basic feminizing makeup to get you started from start to finish. From here, to here. quickly recap everything we've learned today. What are all of these makeup things? First off, you've got color correctors. There's color correcting concealers, but I just use eyeshadows, and that's just to even out discolorations on your face. Next up, you've got concealer, which is a thick, lockout, liquid type makeup. I generally use it after color correction to cover up the difference in color between color corrected and normal skin. Next up is foundation. Foundation is another liquid makeup. Sometimes you can get it in powder, but I would recommend for most trans people starting out, try and get a liquid one. It's much easier. Try use a blending sponge, put it all around on your face, and that becomes the building block for the rest of your makeup. That's what you apply everything else to. It's also a nice, lovely block out consistency and can help even out the difference in color between your color corrected and concealed skin and your normal skin. Next up is blush. Now blush is normally in a powder form. Sometimes it gives you an orgasm. God damn it, I forgot. Oh, I made that joke in another video. Typically you would apply it with a soft brush. Something like this, just a dab on and dab off. Then once you've got all that said and done, you can focus on your eye makeup. 
you should start with eyeshadow. Make sure you don't go too dark. Just a nice brown will do you just fine. You don't want to end up looking like a corpse. If you have darker skin, I'm sorry, I don't have it much expertise. Next up is eyeliner. As I said before, trial and error and practice makes perfect. Keep on trying different things until you find a shape that perfectly accentuates your eye and makes you look the most feminine. Eyeliner comes in a lot of different formats. You can get it in pencils, you can get it in liquid pens, and you can even get it in like these crayon type things. I would say for pretty much every trans girl out there, go for a liquid eyeliner. A liquid eyeliner is these ones with the, the paintbrush type tips. In my opinion, this is just perfect. It creates the smoothest line, it's the easiest to use. But I will also say, don't be a little bitch. Sorry, that was a little bit harsh. Spend the money and get a good eyeliner. If you skimp on everything else, that's fine, but just get a good eyeliner. Eyeliner makes or breaks your makeup and you really do get what you pay for with eyeliner. Next up is mascara. Mascara can come in a couple forms. You can get it in these sort of paintbrush style, nail polish type, applicator type things. This is my preferred method. You can also get them with like a pad of ink and a separate brush. It's a similar situation. I'd recommend you use a lash curler before you jump into it. Then you may or may not want to do freckles. I just dot a waterproof brow color on for mine. And last but not least, your lips. I would recommend try some lip glosses. They generally work the best in my opinion. It's the easiest way to start anyway. I know of course that all of these things I've shown you, there are better, more complicated ways to do them, but I tailored this specific tutorial towards a beginner. Be brave, try new things, don't be afraid to go into that makeup store and ask them to help you find the right shade of foundation. Have fun with it, look like a bad bitch, open up an old fashioned boutique selling teapots and polished wooden furniture, sell coffee and cream donuts. Poison the coffee! Those are my tips for getting started on makeup as a trans woman. For all of you baby trans out there, I'm so excited for you. You are on one of the most fun journeys one can take in all of life. And I hope I've been able to help you with my makeup tips. Good luck.